Hi, and welcome to S for Science. And today we're going to see how you could be immortal. And why would you want to be immortal? Well, I don't know. It will be up to you to decide if living forever is something good or bad. Anyhow, it is important to clarify that we're not going to talk about fully physical immortality. I mean, we're not going to talk about how to survive if you fall into a volcano or if you go to space without a spacesuit. We're going to talk about being immune to physical deterioration. The human beings started being human when they realized that they were not immortal. We are the only animal aware that sooner or later death will arrive. Animals are not aware of this. They simply feel fear against possible threats. But don't think that one day they're going to die. A thought that when it appeared in humans, it made us who we are. The fear of death made us worry about a worse future. It made us keep food for bad seasons. It made us value much more our lives. It made us develop medicine. It made us invent tools that would allow us to extend our lives. And the list goes on. Without the knowledge that someday we're going to die, what would have prompted us to use our intelligence? What would have motivated us to fully take advantage of our lives? And today we want to go further. Living forever. And there are many ways to do it. Let's start with the easiest one, until we reach Einstein's special relativity. Let's start with cryogenics or freezing, which consists in the preservation in low temperatures of people that modern medicine can't keep alive. Its purpose is to conserve the bodies of the patients to revive them and then cure them in the future, assuming that in the future they can find a cure. You can also preserve the brain only, since in reality, everything that defines us exists inside that organ. And at the same time, it is much cheaper than to freeze the whole body. Right now, more than 300 people are waiting to be unfreezed. The problem with this technique is that it can only be applied when the person is already dead. We can't do anything until they no longer have signs of life. So in reality, when these people are frozen, they are already dead. You need to wait until they no longer have signs of life to then quickly freeze them in containers like this. Liquid nitrogen is used at negative 192 degrees. Also, substances are added to avoid the formation of ice, preventing any type of damage caused by ice crystals. Many of the people that are frozen were famous before dying. And well, now those over 300 people are famous because of the fact of being frozen. Maybe the most famous case is Ted Williams, a baseball player from the American League. There's a myth that Walt Disney was frozen. Something that is not true. He was cremated and is buried in the Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery, California. This technique presents many problems. Most of them, however, are small and are purely physical, referring to how to perfectly preserve the body without breaking any tissues despite using that substance that prevents the formation of crystals. But there is a bigger problem above all of this, and it is that, in a way, you don't really reach immortality. We only remain dead for a few years until we wake up to receive a few more years of life. Because while you're frozen, you're not living. In fact, we could prolong the process until the end of the universe. But being honest, is this really being immortal? Think about it. Besides, we have no idea if the brain can continue to live once it has stopped, once it has not been functioning for so long. In fact, we have found many frozen animals throughout history. Some mammoths have even been frozen in optimum conditions. But so far, we have never been able to revive them. And this implies that maybe, after unfreezing the person, it could be impossible to revive them. Although, we have alternatives. We could, for example, do a brain scan while the person is frozen and copy their brain into a computer. And this brings us to the second type of immortality, virtual. In this channel, we already dedicated a video to this subject, to how to reach immortality by making a copy of your consciousness and putting it into a simulation. In a nutshell, the biggest problem with this technology is that you're not being transferred in the strict sense of the term, but instead making a copy of you. You're copying your mind into a computer program. This copy will feel that it's you, will not notice the difference. In fact, it will think that it's you who's living that experience. But in reality, that is not actually you. Your brain will remain frozen in liquid nitrogen, unable to function forever. 
the person who was frozen will never wake up. It is for this reason that mind transfer is widely discussed as a technique for achieving immortality. Of course, a self-conscious being will indeed exist inside of a computer, but it wouldn't be one of us. Unless this video is being viewed by a consciousness inside of a computer program. In which case… hi. <laughs> well, this is getting complicated. Fortunately, it is not necessary to use futuristic technology to be able to live more. We just have to use one of the rules that govern this universe, the special relativity. Special relativity is especially difficult to understand, but let's try. Imagine that you're meeting with a friend in a train station, but the train is delayed. And to pass the time, you decide to calculate the speed of light. To do so, simply point a laser to a person and knowing the distance between the two of you, then count the time it takes to go between the two points. If you do it right, you will get 300 million meters per second. Now imagine that the train is coming but it doesn't stop and it passes the station at 100 meters per second. But let's take advantage of it. Imagine that in that train there are two friends just like you, doing the same thing, calculating the speed of light. Both of them at each end of the wagon are pointing the beam of the laser to calculate the speed of light. And now you're probably thinking that they are going to get 300 million meters per second plus 100 meters per second, because it is the speed that they already carry with the wagon. So that's very easy, they'll get 300 million 100 meters per second, right? Well, not really. These two friends will measure exactly the same thing that you measured if they do it right. 300 million meters per second. It is something that has been proven experimentally in both airplanes and satellites. And so, what's happening here? Well, welcome to special relativity. If the speed and the distance are the same, the only thing that we can change in the equation is the time. In fact, the time on the train passes slightly slower than that of the people who were standing at the station. It will seem strange to you, but we like it or not, this is how our universe works. Don't tell me it is not fascinating. This is not something bad, quite the contrary, although at first it was a problem for the first satellites since their clocks did not take into account special relativity, we could use it to be immortal. Look at this graph, below you have the speed, c is the speed of light. On the left, you have what is called the Lorentz factor, which indicates how much time slows down as we go faster. From this graph, we could see that going, for example, at 299,792,457 meters per second, which is almost the speed of light, what for us would be a second, for the people on the Earth, would be three and a half hours. So if we were a little faster, not to the speed of light, which is impossible for matter, and we are matter, we would reach immortality in a certain way. Time would be the same for us. That is, from your perspective, 100 years would pass. But a second for you could be for the Earth millions of years. If you wanted time to not pass for you, then you would have to go at sea, at the speed of light. As you see here, the graph's function is asymptotic, which means that the blue line never touches the black one. This, translated, indicates that the expansion of time is infinite when you go at the speed of light. In other words, there's no time when you're light. The problem is that the Lorentz factor also tells you the energy that you need to reach that speed. And in the same way as the dilation of time would be infinite, so would be the necessary energy for you to reach that speed. So, you're either energy in the form of a photon, or you will never be able to dispose of the passage of time. And turning into photons is worse than freezing. We started talking about cryogenization, and we're now in special relativity. Let's now get serious. Is there any viable way to extend my life indefinitely? To be immortal? The answer is, ironically, in one of the diseases that more human lives take every year. Cancer. Because cancer does not attack your body. Cancer doesn't release toxins. Cancer is nothing more than cells in your body that refuse to die. In a healthy body, it is normal for cells to die. In fact, every day you lose millions of dead cells. This is a mechanism that is poorly believed that life developed to avoid the effects of cancer. Because what happens is that sometimes there are cells that refuse to die and put their survival over yours. 
That is when they begin to grow out of control, without dying and having daughters, who are also immortal. And this, my friends, are the cancer cells. They have the ability to divide indefinitely. That is, they acquire immortality. And they do this because they're able to keep their telomeres always young. Tele what? Telomeres. If there is any true way to achieve immortality, it is in the telomeres of your cells, some areas at the end of your chromosomes whose function is to protect the genetic material from deterioration. When the telomeres of a living being run out, their cells begin to grow old, concluding this process after a short time with death or degenerative diseases that soon end up being lethal. And while you're watching this video, your telomeres are running out, little by little, but without ever stopping. And what do cancer cells do to avoid this process? To be immortal? I introduce you to telomerase, an enzyme present in cancer cells and stem cells, but absent in the rest of the cells of your body. Its function is to keep telomeres young. So, if we could activate telomerase in human cells, in a controlled way, not as in cancer, we could avoid that deterioration of telomeres, thus achieving immortality. Or at least extending human life a lot. And if we could also deactivate telomerase, we would end cancer. And the best of all is that this is not impossible. Quite the contrary, in fact. The Spanish scientist Maria Blasco, for example, achieved on 2015, through the treatment of telomeres with telomerase, to increase the life of mice by 40%. Now that the potential of this technique is more than proven, research is being done on how to improve it and apply it safely in humans. So with the passage of a few decades, we may find a true way of achieving immortality. Who should think about this now is you. Is it fair for us to live forever, consuming the resources of the generations to come? Let's remember what we said at the beginning of the video. How being conscious of our non-existent immortality, of our mortality, made us live alive, gave us the motivation to progress, to take advantage of every day, to survive. Without that motivation, if one day we become immortal, wouldn't that take away the desire to live? Knowing that you have infinite time wouldn't stop you from trying to take advantage of your life? In my humble opinion, immortality is not something that we should aspire to. But increasing life expectancy is because a few more centuries of life wouldn't do us wrong, because I believe that all of us would like to see the interstellar travel come true, to see humanity shining. Thank you very much for watching this video, and goodbye.